I have a Leica SL2 with me for about a week now. I have used it to shoot a lot of photos and videos using a few different L-mount lenses and also N-mount lenses. I also did a bit of comparison with the Panasonic Lumix S1 now and I got some surprising results I want to share with you. And speaking of the S1 now, I know a lot of you have the question, is the SL2 just a rebatch S1 now? And why is the SL2 double the price of the S1 now, even though the spec looks very similar? I'm going to talk about both of these in this video as well. Kia ora, good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, my name is Richard Wan. I'm a photographer based in New Zealand. On this channel, I do a lot of camera and tech review like this one. And I also do some other video that doesn't talk so much about the gear, but focus more on photography. So anyway, I have the Leica SL2 with me for about a week now. I shot a lot of photos and video, and I also did a bit of testing. So I'm going to share with you my test result later in this review. But before that, let's talk about the body design of the Leica SL2 first. The Leica SL2 is a full-frame mirrorless camera. It has a magnesium chassis with the aluminium top and bottom plate. The grip is really deep and very comfortable and it is covered with two different kinds of material. So when you are holding the camera, it feels very comfortable and it feels very supportive. This is probably really needed because a lot of the L-mount lenses are really big, especially the L-mount lenses from Leica themselves. There are quite a few customizable buttons at the front, at the top, and also at the back of the camera. Look at the button closely, you will quickly notice that none of those customizable buttons has anything printed on it. If you have watched some of my previous review, I have complained about some of the button layout for some of the camera. For example, I want to swap the position of the exposure compensation button with the white balance button. Even though those cameras actually allow me to do that, but I just didn't do it. The reason is just because of my personal OCD. I feel like if I just swap the two buttons, but the label on it still say uh, white balance, but it's now the exposure conversation and vice versa. And for that stupid reason, a lot of time I don't like to customize the buttons on the camera. Um, and this time with the SL2, because there's no label at all on any of the buttons, so I feel I'm completely free to customize any of the buttons to any feature I like. And it does also make the camera look a lot cleaner. The only free button with a label printed on it are the free button next to the LCD screen. We have the play button at the top here, and then the function button in the middle, and the menu button at the bottom. The total number of buttons and controls on the SL2 is quite a bit less than the other full frame camera in the market. But because of that, when I pick up the SL2, I don't really feel I'm overwhelmed by you know the large number of buttons and controls there. Yet I feel I can still quickly change the settings that I want to change frequently without having to go into any of the menus. And the SL2 is a very beautiful camera. Now, I don't really use the word beautiful very often in my reviews, but the SL2 is really a beautiful camera. Cameras from Leica usually have a very nice design, but even then, I won't call every Leica camera beautiful. For example, the original SL, um, I think the design looks quite good, but it also looks quite boring and I definitely wouldn't use the word beautiful to describe the original SL's camera body. Pretty much everything of the camera body, the layout, the position of all the buttons, dials, controls are perfect. The only thing that I don't really like is the power switch at the back here, which is here which I find it quite hard to turn on and turn off especially when I'm in hurry. But maybe the camera was really not designed for people who need to rush when they are taking photo. You need to slow down and enjoy the shooting experience when you are using the Leica SL2. Looking at the startup animation at the top screen here, when you pick up the really really solid body, 
when you turn the really big and solid metal dial at the top of the body and look through the very sharp 5.7 megapixel electronic viewfinder click the shutter button and then you can hear the beautiful shutter sound every single step of this shooting process with the SL2 is a very satisfying experience it's an experience that not many camera in the market can offer you even removing the battery from the camera using this magazine style mechanism is a very satisfying experience you don't have any flimsy battery door you just slide this metal slider and then the battery will just pops out and this is the same battery as the SL and Q2 so if you have any of those camera then you can share the battery between those cameras the camera's menu system has a very lighter design and it is quite easy to navigate even if you have never used a Leica camera before. So the number of settings that you can customize on the SL2 may not be as extensive as some other camera in the market but on the positive side, the smaller number of settings does allow you to change some of the most frequently used settings a lot quicker and easier. A lot of the menu settings, especially the quick settings, can just be changed by using the touch screen at the back of the camera. For the other one, you would mostly just use the dial here, which you can also press in, and then also the little joystick here. You can also use the little joystick to change the autofocus position, but for me personally, when I'm shooting using the EVF, I just prefer to turn on the touch AF feature so that I can just use the thumb on the LCD screen and adjust the autofocus point this way, which I find is a lot faster and a lot more intuitive than using the little joystick. Next, let's talk about the camera's autofocus performance. Just like all the other l man camera in the market right now, the SL2 also use a contrast detection only autofocus system. And the performance of the autofocus system is actually very good. When I'm taking photos in single autofocus mode, the autofocus speed is fast and it's also very accurate with almost no hunting at all. I'm not too sure whether Leica is using any kind of DFD autofocus technology on the SL2 but when I compared it side by side with uh, S1R, the autofocus speed and also how smoothly it would just snap to the target that you are pointing to is very similar between these two cameras. And when you're shooting in continuous autofocus mode, unfortunately you still see those micro pausing or figuring that um, you will notice even when your subject is stationary. This is a limitation of the current contrast detection autofocus system. We see the same behavior with the latest Panasonic cameras as well. It could be a little bit distracting because the electronic viewfinder is very high resolution and very sharp. Unfortunately, they allow you to see those micro pulsing quite clearly when you are shooting with the EVF. But in practice, it doesn't actually seem to affect the, um, the accuracy of the autofocus at all. Uh, when I take the photo, the subject that I'm shooting seems to be always in focus. And the camera also has an IAF mode, which will automatically switch between uh, single autofocus and continuous autofocus. So um, the good thing is when you are shooting, uh, pointing to a stationary target, the autofocus system will just behave just like a single autofocus mode. You don't see any micro pausing at all. And as soon as you point to a moving target or when your target start moving, then the autofocus system will switch to the continuous autofocus mode so it will immediately try to follow your autofocus target. Overall, the IAF mode seems to work quite well and that's the autofocus mode I've been using mostly over the last week. And I have also tried mounting the Panasonic Lumix S Pro 51.4 lens on the SL2 because I want to see how the autofocus performance is like when you are uh, mixing the Elman lens from another of the Elman Alliance member onto the Leica SL2 body. And I can tell you that the Lumix lens works perfectly on the SL2. 
the autofocus speed is still lightning fast and there's also no hunting at all and even i was doing the testing just after sunset so it was not the brightest time of the day but the autofocus performance was still really good to me i really don't feel there's any difference when the lens is mounted on the sl2 body compared to mount on the lumix s1r body the speed the accuracy the amount of hunting or lack of hunting is pretty much identical so next i also try pull this uh, focus ring the focus clutch and turn the lens into many focus mode i just want to see if the many focus mode would still work or not with the sl2 and it works perfectly so as soon as i turn it into many focus mode and start turning the focus ring and the sl2 would detect that immediately and zoom in the focus area to allow me to do the menu focus accurately and i also tested the aperture ring on the lumix s pro 51.4 and that also works perfectly so as soon as i turn the aperture ring on the lens the camera will detect the changes immediately I was definitely a bit surprised by that because I wasn't expecting the lens to behave pretty much exactly the same as if it was mounted on a Panasonic body. I also tested the continuous autofocus performance when shooting video using the SL2 and overall I think the performance is actually pretty okay. While sometimes the autofocus could have a little bit of hunting if your target the distance move quite quickly or if your target suddenly pops into the scene or pops out of the scene overall most of the time the autofocus is very smooth and the response is also pretty quick as well even when i was shooting at the normal frame rate 24 or 25 frame per second the SL2 doesn't seem to have eye detection, but the face and body detection seems to work very reliably and accurately when I was testing it with the Leica 24-90mm lens. The Leica SL2 has a 5-axis in-body image stabilization system. Leica claims that the image stabilization system is up to 5.5 stop effective. I did a quick test, I shot about 500 photos at different shutter speed and my results suggest that the image stabilization system is about 4 stop effective when I was shooting at 75mm focal length. If you have watched my previous camera review which I have tested the image stabilization system, you notice that my results is usually about 1 to 1.5 stop less than the official figure. So this time my 4 stop result is pretty much in line with the factory claimed 5.5 stop figure. And one thing I found very important is that because the SL2, it has a very high resolution 47 megapixel sensor. So um, when I have the in-body image stabilization system turned off and I was shooting with the 75mm lens, um, even when I was shooting at 1 over 80 second shutter speed, not every single photo I shot at the 180 shutter speed is sharp. Some of the photo I shot at that shutter speed is actually slightly blurry. But when I turn on the in-body image stabilization system, I can shoot at shutter speed as slow as 1 tenth second and pretty much 100% of photos I shot at that shutter speed is still sharp. So that is definitely very impressive and that just allow users to shoot at much slower shutter speed when they are shooting handheld and because of that they can shoot at much lower ISO to improve the image quality as well. And speaking of image quality, as I just mentioned before, the SL2 has a 47 megapixel full frame sensor. So this is the same resolution as the one on the Q2. And this is also the same resolution as the Panasonic S1R. Like I hasn't tell us who made the sensor for the SL2, but I am guessing this is not a Sony sensor. 
And also, this is not the exact same sensor as the one on the S1R because Leica has made some changes to the glass in front of the sensor. And also, the micro lens on the sensor is also specially designed to give you better edge and corner image quality when the user is mounting some M1 lens onto the SL2 body. So I did a bit of testing to see how the image quality is like when you mount a M1 lens onto your SL2 compared to your S1R. But before that, let's have a look at the ISO performance when you are taking photo using the SL2. And here are the photos I shot using the SL2. I shot a photo in raw mode and then I put it into Lightroom and then convert them to JPEG using all the standard settings. As you can see, um, at low ISO, the image quality is fantastic. And as I increase the ISO, the image quality still maintains pretty good. And even when I go up to the maximum ISO, which is ISO 50,000, I think the image quality is still pretty decent. And if I compare the photo shot at the maximum ISO on the S1R, which is 51,200, put them side by side, you can see that the image quality is actually very similar. And if we zoom in and do a bit of pixel peeping, you can see that the photo from the Leica seems to have a little bit less noise, but on the other hand, the Panasonic seems to maintain the fine detail a little bit better. And as I just said, I did some testing to see how the, um, when you mount the M1 lens on the SL2, how is the corner image quality is like when you compare to the Panasonic S1R, which also has the 47 megapixel sensor. So I did some side-by-side -side comparison that I shot um, using both of this camera. And I used this 24mm Summerlux lens and I mounted on each of the body. And when I put the photos side by side and check the results, one thing that I immediately noticed is that with the photo from the SL2, because the um, adapter that I use also has the electronic contact. The SL2 know what lens I'm using and it applies the lens profile correction to the photo. So you can see that the photo from the SL2 has a lot less vignetting because it probably have applied some vignetting control compared to the one from the S1R. So um, when I look at the corner, there is quite a big difference between the corner from these two photos. So I thought what I really should do is that I should turn off the lens profile correction first because what I want to see is that if the sensor on the SL2 actually improve the corner image quality without applying the software correction. So I turn off the lens profile on the SL2 and I took another pair of comparison photo. This is the result I got after I turn off the lens profile correction. As you can see, there's now no vignetting compensation applied. And while I think the image from the SL2 may be tiny bit sharper than the one from S1R, the difference is very minor. One thing I can definitely see is that the image from the SL2 has a lot less chromatic aberration compared to the one from the S1R. If you look at the photo from the S1R, you can definitely see uh, quite a bit of chromatic aberration. And when you look at the photo from the SL2, there is virtually no chromatic aberration. So that is definitely one very noticeable difference uh, when you compare the corner image quality from these two cameras. Okay, next let's talk about the video feature that is available on the Leica SL2. And there are some very serious video feature that is available on the SL2. First, it can capture video up to 5K resolution, and then it can capture 4K video up to 60 frames per second. And it can also capture 10-bit video also internally. But if you are capturing 4K 60 frames per second video, then internally it can only record at 8-bit. And if you want to capture at 10-bit, then you have to connect externally, then you can capture 4K 60 10 bit footage. And speaking about connect externally, the HDMI port on the camera is a full size HDMI port. So I definitely really like it because it is much stronger than the mini or micro HDMI port that is on a lot of other cameras. 
But if you don't need to capture 60 frames per second, then you can capture 4K footage up to 30 frames per second internally at 10 bit at 400 megabit per second. So that is a very high quality output that you can capture just internally without having to use any external recorder. And you can also turn on the L lock if you want to capture better dynamic range. One thing I want to talk about is that when you are capturing video at 4K 60 frames per second, you can actually use almost full width, the full sensor width when you are capturing video. Uh, I say almost because there is actually a small 1.1 times crop when you are capturing any kind of 4K video. But that is a very tiny crop that a lot of people just don't mention at all because uh, even on the S1R when you are capturing 4K video at say 25 frames per second, there is also that 1.1 crop applied to all the 4K video recorded on the S1R. So this is exactly the same with the SL2 with the exception that even when you are capturing at 60 frames per second, the crop factor or the lack of crop factor is still the same. So even the Panasonic S1H when you are recording at the 4K 60 frames per second, it still has a 1.5 time crop factor. So this is something that SL2 actually managed to do better than the Panasonic S1H. And I have also done a bit of comparison shooting at different ISO from base ISO all the way up to maximum ISO in 4K resolution and compared it with the Panasonic S1R just see how the picture quality of these two compare because we know that Panasonic's video quality is always really good so I want to see how the SL2 is compared to the Panasonic and at the lower ISO I see virtually no difference between the video footage output from these two cameras they both look very nice very good quality um, but one thing that is a bit surprising is that when I'm shooting at the maximum ISO which is ISO 50,000 on the SL2 and 51,200 on the Panasonic S1R the video from the SL2 actually looks slightly better quality than the Panasonic there is less noise in the shadow and the overall contrast it maintained a bit better than the Panasonic that is definitely a little bit of surprise to me Oh, by the way, when you switch from the photo mode to the video mode on the SL2, oh, and you can do it quite easily by just swiping um, the rear LCD screen and that can turn from photo mode to the video mode. If you set it to cine mode, then you will see the display setting also change. Um, instead of using ISO, you will become ASA. Instead of F-stop, it will be T-stop. And also instead of displaying the shutter speed, it will now display the shutter angle. One minor complaint about swiping the rear LCD screen to switch between the photo and video mode is that um, I really like that feature. I find it's very intuitive and I'm actually surprised the Leica is the first one to come up with this way to switch between photo and video mode. But I do find that when I actually try to use it, sometimes it doesn't really work. So sometimes I have to swipe it two or three times. And sometimes when I swipe it more than once because I thought the first time didn't work, actually it did work. And, and so I actually switch from photo to video and then back to photo again. So I'm not really sure if this is a user error. If you have used the SL2, um, I would like to hear whether you find the same problem as me or not. But otherwise, um, I really like the um, overall implementation, how you can switch between the photo and video mode and also how the menu system looks like and allow you to change the setting quite easily when you are shooting video. Okay, now let's come back and talk about two of the questions I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The first one, um, is the SL2 just a rebatch or clone of the Panasonic S1R? And second is why the SL2 is so much more expensive, like pretty much double the price of the S1R while the spec looks very similar between these two cameras. So is it really worth uh, the extra price compared to the S1R? So um, let's answer the first question first. The first one is a lot easier to answer. Is it just a rebatch? S1 now, the answer is definitely not. So yes, even though a lot of components um, is probably shared between these two camera, the sensor I think is largely the same. The EVF is largely the same apart from the optics behind 
the EVF is different. And the autofocus system on the SL2, I believe, is largely based on the one on the S1R as well. So there are many things that is very similar between these two cameras. But sharing components and technology is just how uh, camera manufacturer create the camera this day. For example, most of the cameras in the market are using the Sony sensor. Uh, you may find the Nikon camera is actually using the same sensor as some of the Sony camera and also Pentax using the same sensor. You will probably find the same EVF panel or the rear LCD screen is used by a lot of camera in the market right now because this is just how things work. Um, if the camera manufacturer want to create every single component themselves. That would just make the camera really, really expensive and not really financially feasible. If you pick up the body, you will immediately feel the body design is completely different. And if you go through the menu system, they are completely different as well. And there are tons of things that is also different. For example, the SL2 has a fixed LCD screen while the S1R has a movable screen. The camera flash system is different. The closest I can say is probably like they are cousins because they have some relationship, but the SL2 is definitely not a rebatch S1R. Okay, now let's come back to the other question. So why is the SL2 so much more expensive than the S1R and um, is it really worth the extra money? So um, I guess it really depends on how you look at it. If you look at the image quality or the feature, I think um, the difference between these two cameras are pretty minor. There are a few things that the SL2 does a little bit better than the S1R, but on the other hand, the Panasonic seems to do a few things a little bit better than the SL2. So overall, I think in terms of the image quality and feature-wise, these two cameras are very similar, yet this one is almost double the price of the Panasonic. But the thing is, when you buy a Leica camera, there are many things that you want from the camera. Image quality is one of them. But apart from the image quality, you also get the fantastic design, the made in Germany build quality, and also that fantastic shooting experience that very few camera in the market can give to you. So whether the SL2 is worth the extra money when you compare to the S1R or any other similar camera in the market right now, I think this is the question that you have to answer yourself. How much does the Leica body design, the build quality and the Leica shooting experience worth to you? And one thing I find quite interesting is that over the last few days, the lens that I pretty much always mounted on the SL2 is actually not this 75mm Summicron lens or any of the l mount lens that I have with me. It's actually the n mount 24mm Summerlex lens is the lens that I always attach to the SL2. I find the reason is probably because um, it has a fantastic electronic real finder which allow me to have the focus very quickly, very precisely. Um, it has the in-body image stabilizer, so it allow me to shoot at much slower shutter speed if I wanted to, which is something that I couldn't do with any of the n mount body. And it also has a very supportive, very comfortable grip that the normal m body doesn't have. So all this together, um, shooting with an M mount lens on this SL2, it's just a very easy and a very enjoyable shooting experience. And the image quality is also very good because of its sensor is really optimized for shooting with a wide angle M mount lens. So I really wouldn't be surprised if I see a lot of like M shooters switch to the SL2 because it is definitely a lot more practical body to shoot with, especially some of the faster M1 lens, which I always a little bit struggling to get the range finder to um, nail the focus. A lot of time I would miss the focus slightly. So this is just a much more practical camera to use, and yet it can still give you the excellent shooting experience that the Leica M camera can give to you. So personally, I would say the Leica SL2 is definitely the best camera to use with any M1 lenses. Thank you very much for watching this very long Leica SL2 review and I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you have any question or anything you want to chat about this SL2, please feel free to just drop a comment below. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video.